Hi, it's Rob here again, and once again, I'm looking at Stellarium, or Stellarium, but also I want to briefly look at Panini. So, these are perspective viewers. Now, Stellarium, or Stellarium, is actually a free open source planetarium for your computer, as the website says, and that's why I've got the website up. But Panini is purely a perspective tool. No stars involved, unless you put them in your image. But anyway, it's a visual tool for creating perspective views from panoramic and wide-angle photographs. More than a pano viewer, more than a view camera, with features of both. So again, it's up there on SourceForge. Uh, it's one of their projects uh, created by TK Sharpless. And uh, search for it, look for it. It's out there. Panini, P-A-N-I-N-I. -I. How do they differ? Let's start with Stellarium. Stellarium. And there it is. You can see the little planet I made yesterday. And I gave it a bit of an atmosphere as well. But anyway, you can do stuff with it. Turn it around, twist it around. And you can see that you get a nice view of the stars in the sky as well. And the beauty of this program, being a planetarium and all, you can not only change uh, details like showing the atmosphere, and I just switched atmosphere off, uh, you can add twinkle and dynamic eye adaptation, whatever that is. You can show planets or not show them. You can take the labels away, no stars, no planets, um, and you can swap landscapes, and which, well, that's what I showed you the other day, or yesterday perhaps, um, where I changed the landscape to my test landscape, which is, of course, the little planet. And you do that just by going into the Program Files folder and looking for the Landscapes folder and copying and pasting and editing, putting your own image in, in place of one of their current landscapes. But enough of that. Oh, you can also select from various uh, star lore type um, uh, options. So you've got Arabic, Aztec, Chinese, Egyptian, Inuit, Korean, and so on. A lot. And it comes up with different overlays showing constellations. Very useful and interesting. And you could probably fiddle with that to put your own overlays on top. But enough of that. I'll leave you to experiment. Back to the sky, and I've turned a lot of things on, and I've turned lots of shooting stars on. Actually, I've turned lots of things off and turned the shooting stars on. And I'll get rid of that. So now you've got an animated star field with your little planet. Now that's something quite unique, I think. It's so open source and easy. I like it. I'm going to spin it around a lot. And you can see, if you've gone to the trouble of making a little planet, you may as well make a little planet movie. So uh, I'm sure you could do lots of other things. You can also turn off other features. Oh, you can turn the ground off and back on. And the cardinal points can disappear. And so on. You can make it dark. Simulate the night sky. You can also uh, give uh, put different grids on. And that's all very interesting. Uh, and you may find a, a use for that. You can also measure angles and what have you. But it's a great program uh, at the planetarium, but uh, it'll also control your telescope if you have one of those telescopes which is controllable by servos and what have you. But uh, enough of that. Let's go back to somewhere else and look at what Panini can do. And it is right here. Same image loaded into Panini. Perspective viewer. And that it's just the linear projection. I can change the projection, the Panini projection, after which it is named and slightly misspelled. But anyway, to differentiate, I'm sure the misspelling is for a good reason. And, of course, Panini with two N's, like P A W N I N I, was an Italian dude who was also into art, architecture, and perspective. It's all about perspective, isn't it? Change your perspective. 
that's what I recommend. And you can see, this, this is very modifiable and controllable, and you get your little planet. I haven't rescaled the trees, but anyway, that's something I can do later. Different projections give different things. Super fish eye, that might be useful, I don't know. It's certainly uh, a lot of fun to play with. And if you've actually got a super fish eye lens and have taken a super fish eye photograph, you can correct aberrations. Um, so you can actually make a obviously fish eye photograph um, no longer <laughs> fish eyed, if you know what I mean. You can correct it. So um, very useful, just in and of itself. So let's go to orthographic and now you see we've made a little planet on a little planet. Well, on a sphere anyway. And tell me if that's not useful. Surely you can think of uses for that. Well, I'm sure, you know, if you're making a video and you want to make your little planet move around a bit, eminently worthwhile. Put it on a star field after you've done this. Take a, a screenshot, put it on a star field uh, background. Do some more animation. You can have a whole sci fi epic happening here. But anyway, enough of that. That's really all I wanted to show you, uh, except to say when you're creating these Panini images, you need to remember to have your height half of your width. So um, once you do that, it will work. And if it's not that um, sort of ratio, you'll find it will look different. That may, may still please you, but if you want the exact effect that I'm getting here of a little planet with no black blob in the middle, make sure they are the dimensions you use or that ratio of um, height uh, being half of width. And that's it. Once again, from me, that was Panini versus Stellarium and its use as a tool in creating and animating little planets. Thanks for watching. Rob out.